Hello, I wanted to come on today and do another video um, using the envelope punch board to show how versatile it is and as we're only about seven weeks away from Christmas I thought we'd do some uh, Christmas crackers. I made these sort of like bigger ones and um, these are made in the beautiful year of cheer um, stamping up designer series paper it's all in um, silver golds and whites it's absolutely beautiful but I also made um, these smaller ones that I made a box for I've got the glare in my light there and they're little dinky smaller size crackers but you can still fit some nice little treats in there chocolates or jewellery or fun things that you could still use um, as like Christmas crackers, um, like uh, lip sauls and little chocolates and or nice pieces of jewellery. But the um, the bigger one, the first ones I'll show you, are like standard size crackers that, um, that you would sort of like usually buy. So I'll go ahead and show you how to make them. I'll do the large one first and then go on to the smaller one. Now this paper that I'm using for this one is the um, Stampin' Up Foil Frenzy designer paper and it's um, it's really luxurious, sort of like on a craft card background and it's really pretty. So we'll start, um, I'm using my Simply School uh, Stampin' Up scoreboard which is just the best scoreboard there is and I've been crafting for about 15 years and I've tried just about every other one. The one thing I like about this one is that the um, the grooves that you emboss into go all the way up to the number. So there's no sort of like guesswork of finding the right groove corresponding to the, the, the number you want to score. So I'll just um, show you what the score line measurements are, but I will, everything will be on my blog. This is another video I've had to do because the last one I do it wouldn't upload properly. So here we go. So you take your piece of card. This measures um, 10 inches long by six and a half inches wide. And we're going to score, first of all, at every inch going along the short side. So, oops. So we'll do one. two, three, four, five and six and then we end up we have like a one inch little piece on the end that we're going to use to glue and then we want to turn around and we're going to um, then um, score the little lines that make the bendy mechanism on the end so for those you want to score at um, one and a half, two and two and a half and then turn it round and do the same so one and a half, two and two and a half. Now that's all the scoring done. We're now just going to um, burnish our creases that we've made. Not going too crazy on this one because I don't want to ruin the foil. I love the colour of this one. It's got the uh, berry burst coloured foil. It's stunning. can also feel how thick the card is. It's easier to burnish your creases before you do your um, the punching because it fits sort of like easier under the, the punch board. Where's that last one? Just there. Right, now we're bringing our amazing 
envelope punch board. There are literally so many things you can make with this piece of kit. Right. I'll do it on this side because of the glare from the foil. I'll zoom in a bit so that I can explain to you where to um, where to score. Um, we're going to line up the edge of our paper at the two mark on the um, on the little measurement thing there, but it lines up with the center of the three creases that you've made. So if you've got the center of your the center piece of the um, the, the actual punch lined up with that central line, have it in the center. It's sort of like another guide, but lined up with two and then punch. Now I will say you have to do one on the end, but only on this wider side, not on the side, not on this narrow side that we're going to glue. And you can either move it along and line up the center and punch, or you could turn it over and line it up to the two and do it, whichever one you find easier. So, but the mark for both of them is the two. And then you want to um, fold over and then start punching on each of the score lines that you've made. And that, oh dear, this is gonna create the, uh, the, bendy part of the Christmas cracker the where you pull and you can buy the if you want them to crack you can actually buy the the little strips that go in if you want the full effect but um, I've had more disappointment in shop-bought crackers that you expect it to give you one and it doesn't. Well, it just upsets the cat, so... You could do these ones and just shout bang. And you could also like make your little hats and things to... to go inside and print off some jokes or... Get your children to handwrite you some good jokes to go inside. Let's face it, they can't be any worse than the ones that uh, come with crackers these days. Right, we're now doing the last one. And that is all of the punching done. You end up with these little bits where, actually if you glued them all together... You could make like a little bauble, or I think I've seen people make flowers with them as well. So you don't have to throw them away if you particularly like the paper. Now, we, um, we've just got to now burnish the creases that make the, uh, the end fold. So we'll do those ones that way, and then we want... Those ones going in, and then we've got to do the uh, those ones going that way, don't we? So put those down, and it's easier to do it from the um, from this side rather than the other, where you've got all those little bits. So that's that bit done. That's your springy bit, and we'll do the bit on this side too. Let's try and do that one first. Right, turn it over. Burnish that one. And this card is really good quality. None of the foil is coming off as we score it and burnish it. And it comes in some lovely colours, this foil. Right, that is that is basically all of the mechanism done all we're going to do now is glue it together so we've got our little uh, little narrow half inch piece that we had left usually I would use wet glue but for speed 
I can find the end of the tape I'm going to use a bit of double sided tape I just think um, wet glue is a bit more permanent personally there'd be nothing worse than giving someone a gift like this and it all coming undone before they get to uh, Right, then all we do is peel off the tape, she says, oh. Oh, come on, there we go. off the tape right and then the easiest thing to do is if you have that line flat you just bring your end of your cracker over and line it up like that and then just do the same with the end pieces So, and that is your your cracker. We're just now going to put the uh, ribbon on, and I'm going to use the uh, berry burst in this case. Let's grab some scissors. Well, there's no more uh, nerve wracking than tying a bow live on camera. But this um, seam binding ribbon is absolutely makes gorgeous bows. go I'll put one on the other end I think I'm about my third reel of this one even though you get like um, I think you get about 10 yards yeah 10 yards on these but I've loved it so much I've used it loads I what she's seen I'm doing Now the one thing I haven't prepared for this is you can cut, oh I can't even tie a bow, you can cut either one and three quarter inch circle or I did a one and three quarter inch hexagon because I just happened to have a one and three quarter inch hex hexagon punch and pop them in the ends and it will hide. Um, I'll just quickly uh, grab them and it'll hide um, any of your uh, me the mechanisms that you or if you want to hide ooh, maybe you dropped you then hide up the uh, make sure I get the right one the workings of your cracker not the workings, hide up the what's inside so you don't want anyone to see the content is what I'm trying to say but I'm trying to think and talk at the same time right let's just quickly die cut that Sorry I've abandoned you, I won't be two minutes. Right, 
my friend's lent me her little mini um, die cutting machine. So if you just want to die cut like a little flower or something. Um, so then if you die cut your little uh, hexagon or whatever and pop it in the end, it totally hides anything you've got inside. So you can... But a one and three quarter inch hexagon or a one and three quarter inch circle both work equally as well so that is and then you can like i have this one you can embellish it with whatever you like whether it's you know your merry christmas or you could personalize them put labels on with names on now i'll go on and show you how to create these small ones which i think are really fun to do like in a box of six and then i just made a, a little box to to go with them you could either do a box with a window in which is a bit more tricky or you could just do um, a box that covered up like a gift so if you were given a gift to a family you could just put um like a little something in each one for each member of a family i think that's quite a nice just a little token gift if there's six of them like we have in our house you have enough room to put six little crackers in the box now i'm going to show you how to make the smaller ones that are featured in those boxes and for those you want a piece of card that is um six and a half inches long um four and a half inches wide I don't have the right way around. No, I haven't. I've done that the wrong way around. Just bear with me two seconds. I needed it. I made a right faux pas there. I've got the, the length and the width modelled up. I needed it six and a half inches wide, the same as the other one, because you want your... Uh, no, I was right. You make these ones into a square. So, we're going to score at... Uh, let's turn it over so you can see better. Um, where's my... There it is. Right, can you see? So we're going to score at one, two, three, and four. And you end up with your little um, one in, half inch for your glue. And then on this one, for the, um, the mechanism creases, you are going to score at one one and a half and two and then you go along to four and a half five and five and a half so that's all our scoring done so we're just going to do the same again burnish the our creases Folds. and then bring in the envelope punch board again and we're going to do the one punch on the the wider side same as we did last time and this time you line it up to one and a half so one and a half on your board there and again it lines up with the centre of those three lines so it's one and a half and then punch and then go along to I think it's five just about on the five but again you can just use that centre score line and punch and then we're going to do the same as we did before and just go through and oh, score a uh, punch on every one of the score lines that we've made. I'm sure if you had a um, 
a little diamond punch, hand punch. You could probably make these without the envelope punch board because the the scoring and everything would be the same. Oh, I missed one out there. So it's one and a half and five you're punching at. Last one, one and a half. But I have to say, I think this is the most versatile tool that I own. If you type, if you go onto Pinterest or um, YouTube and just type in envelope punch board you don't have to put in the stamping up one you can just type in envelope punch board projects you will be amazed at how many projects come up from gift bags to toolboxes to um, just bows I've seen people make little hair bows with them And envelopes, of course, and boxes. You can make any size card you make. You can make a box to match. There is no more. You're not restricted by the regular envelope sizes. You can make whatever size card. You see, I tend to make cards. If I've if I've done a piece of um, like a inked background, and I want to turn that into a card, I'll go with the size of the background, which doesn't always correlate to to the size of um, a standard card base or envelope so it's quite nice to have a tool where I can just make the envelopes to fit whatever card I make right now we've done all the uh, all that part so we're just going to stick our glue on I'm just going to quickly plug the camera in because it's showing the battery warning light so I might just jog you. Sorry about that. Phew! I didn't want to have to do it again. So let me get my tape. And tape up my cracker. Piece on there. A piece on the end. And these ones you don't, they close up quite small, so you don't really need to put anything in the ends. And they hold their shape quite nicely. The hexagonal ones, the bigger ones, can sort of like squash out a shape quite easily. So having those little one and three quarter inch discs in the end do help sort of like keep the shape of the uh, the end of the, the cone. And I was going to make a box for those, but you'd need at least... Uh, um, like an A3 size piece of card and I didn't think everybody would have one so I just made a box for the smaller ones. So now we're just going to line up the edge of our cracker with the just the edge of that um, little s small edge we had left and then do the same. They, they sort of like find their place quite easily and that is your little dinky crackers. And you can just squish them together and they'll stay like that. But to me, you can't have a ribbon. You can't have a cracker without a bit of fancy ribbon on the end. So let's... Oops. Sit straight. Tie it up. With a bow. And wouldn't this make an amazing gift wrap for a Christmas present? I've I've um, three young ladies, and they all like little jewelry bits and bits of makeup. So I think a box of six little um, 
in the individual things to open in a box would be a really nice way to present like presents that don't really cost that much or these little ones you could use to um, put on a tree for like tree presents or even little decorations on your tree right I won't faff around with the bows too much but there you go there's the small one and there's his big brother so I hope you uh, find that useful and I'd love to see any that you uh, that you, any you make. So if you go over to my blog, which is cotswoldcrafter.blogspot.co.uk, you'll find all the measurements for these written down. And um, there and there'll be like a close up photographs of them. Um, and there's also my contact on there. So if you did make one and want me to show them on my blog, I'll be more than happy to do so. But thank you for taking the time to watch my video. And I'll be along soon with another project for your amazing envelope punch board. Thank you very much. Bye bye.